All right, this chapter is all about alkyl halides, and uh, what we need to think about is their intermolecular forces. So, um, alkyl halides, uh, well, just intermolecular forces in general. What are the types? Same right now. Yep, if I heard uh, van der Waal interactions. Dipole, dipole, that's another type of intermolecular force. Um, and hydrogen bonding, yeah, good job, all those. Um, so alkyl halide intermolecular forces, um, well, they, they have, everything has van der Waal, right? So they would have van der Waal interactions. Um, and then what else? Uh, all of them have a bond from a carbon to a halogen. Um, the halogen is more electronegative. That's going to give them a dipole. So they all have dipole, dipole forces as well. Um, what about the third one, hydrogen bonding? Um, technically, fluorine is one of those atoms that can hydrogen bond, so we'll just put that kind of in parentheses. Fluorine can um, accept, accept an H bond. Um, so uh, that would be a third type for, for fluorine. So um, intermolecular forces, they have, they have impacts on the physical properties of molecules. Um, and one of those physical properties is boiling point. Um, so uh, which of these things has the higher boiling point? So number one, number two, number three, number one compares those two, number two compares those two, number three compares those two. Um, so go ahead and make your selections and pause it. And when you're done, whoop, you just unpause. Good job. So um, if we compare A to B, A exclusively has van der Waal interactions. That's the lowest type of intermolecular force. So B has van der Waal plus dipole, dipole. That's going to give it more intermolecular forces, a higher boiling point, therefore. Uh, what about A versus B here? Um, they have the same types of forces, but one of these is going to have more of one of those types, right? Um, yeah, yeah, it's going to have more van der Waal forces, right? Because it just has extra carbons on it. So anything that's larger than something else, this is larger by an extra carbon. This has three carbons, this just has two carbons. So this is larger, it's going to have more, more van der Waal interactions. It's going to give it a, um, give it a higher boiling point. Um, what about this last one? Um, this last one kind of gets into that same idea of being larger. Um, the bromine is a larger atom, and if you think back to what we talked about in chapter three, um, that makes it more polarizable. There's more shells of electrons around it uh, that allows those electrons to get polarized to one side or the other side of that atom. Um, it's larger, it's going to have more of those forces. Um, bromine is the uh, higher boiling point, more intermolecular forces because of that polarizability makes it um, more, uh, more it makes it have more intermolecular forces, which makes it have a higher boiling point. So, um, yeah. So that's how how uh, how these, these that's the type of intermolecular forces these have, and how that impacts their physical properties. All right. Another thing about alkyl halides is. They have that dipole moment, right? They have dipole-dipole forces. And um, thinking back to some of the terms we learned in chapter three, the carbon of an alkyl halide, so that carbon right there, uh, would we say that that carbon is electrophilic or nucleophilic? So pause the video, think about those terms, define those terms, and try and decide for yourself. Um, so you paused it, you just unpaused it. Um, so. What does electrophilic versus nucleophilic mean? Um, remember, philic means to love. So electrophilic means it loves electrons. Nucleophilic means it loves nuclei. So if you're a nucleophilic, if you love nuclei, nuclei are what charge? Nuclei are positively charged. So nucleophiles love positive, they are negative. So nucleophiles love positive charge and they love it because they're negatives. And remember in organic chemistry, negatives flow to positives. Um, electrophiles love electrons and electrons are negatively charged, which means that they are positive. 
Um, so electrophiles are positive. Well, what about that carbon? Is that carbon positive or negative? Um, that carbon has a big dipole, right? This chlorine is more electronegative than it. It has a big partial negative right there, a big partial positive right there. Um, so that means that the, the carbon is partially positively charged. It's an electrophile. It, it wants more electrons. It wants all the electrons that would give it its full octet. And right now it has a full octet, but chlorine is not sharing. It's good to share. Sharing is caring and that can be fun. Chlorine's not sharing very well. That makes these alkyl halides reactive. Um, so alkyl halides, the carbon out of, of alkyl halides is electrophilic. Um, and how can we see that? Well, in your note packet, um, I have the electrostatic potential maps of each of these alkyl halides. So you can see CH3F, CH3Cl, Br, I, and all of these, um, there's a lot of the blue-purple color around the carbon side of that molecule. That blue-purple color indicates positive charge. So even though this carbon is technically has a neutral formal charge, it is feeling a very large partial positive. Um, and, and on that note packet, it says the polar CX bond makes the carbon atom electron deficient in each CH3X molecule. So if that's the case, if we were to add a nucleophile, and remember nucleophiles are negative, which if they're negatively charged, that means they have electrons, the nucleophile is likely to be attracted to that positive charge. Um, and, and, and what we're going to see in this chapter is that when we add nucleophiles to this, the nucleophile will add there, and that CCL bond will break as a result. Um, so we'll get more into that later.